Most cameras have got three metering modes. Look, the little dot here, that's spot metering. At the top, I've got the little bracket around the dot, that's center weighted. And this one is multi-matrix or evaluative metering. When you spot meter, you put the little dot in the middle of the camera's viewfinder onto whatever you want the camera to interpret as mid-gray, and then it does it. If you're using center weighted, then the camera measures around the middle of whatever's in the viewfinder, but it averages out towards the edges a little bit, and it takes that whole lot and it averages that to mid-gray. When you're in evaluative, it looks at the entire scene, the whole lot, everything that's in your viewfinder, and then it makes the whole thing average as mid-gray. Let's have a look at spot metering first. And to do it, I've got an iPhone. I bet you didn't know that A, you can mount an iPhone onto a tripod with bits of tape, and trust me, it's tricky, or B, that an iPhone can spot meter. Now watch, you can see in the shot here, if I just press on the darker beach hut here, like that, Bit fiddly, nothing happens, there we go. Look, the picture has immediately got brighter because I've just told the iPhone that I want that darker bit to be mid-gray, so it's brightened everything up. But the sky's completely washed out, isn't it? Now suppose I wanted to see detail in those clouds, all I have to do is say to the iPhone, I want detail in the clouds, so therefore please make those clouds equate to mid-gray. So all I have to do, if I can stop it all falling over because it's wobbly, press here on the sky and bingo tons of detail in the sky but everything else has gone really dark and it's exactly the same with your digital SLR camera if you're using spot metering you've got to tell it where you want mid gray to be hello it's quite astonishing really, isn't it? You can go almost anywhere on any given day of the week and find a moody teenager posing between beach huts. You all right, Bean? You all right? Yeah, I'm lovely, thanks. This is another one of Jane's children. You may have met Natasha in our DVD. This is one of her brothers, so I can give him a really hard time. Now, I'm gonna shoot a portrait of James in here, and I've chosen here because I like the composition. I like the lines in the timber kind of leading in towards James here, but also to demonstrate the metering, this is a really, really difficult place to do a shot. We've got bright white here, and we've got a much darker timber here, and then we've got the brightness of the sky going on behind him. James is in the darkest area almost, in between the two, but the light on James is really, really good. So how do we go about shooting a portrait of James? Well, the most important part of a portrait is usually the person who's in it. So we want to expose for James and for his face, which is about here. So how do we tell the camera that mid-gray is where James' face is? Because if the camera thinks mid-gray is just here, the exposure will be perfect for James. It might go a bit haywire elsewhere, but this is a picture of James. Well, the most kind of accurate way is to get your grey card out and then hold it in front of James's face. We're on spot metering mode, <clears throat> so all I have to do is hold this in here, being very careful not to block your own light. If I stood here like that, I'm putting a shadow on the grey card. It's going to mess up the exposure. I'm going to put the grey card there so that I can say to my camera, I want you to put mid-grey right here and then the exposure will be correct. So I put the little dot in the middle of the viewfinder on the gray, and then I just change the shutter speed until it says that exposure is correct. And that's right, it's saying 100th of a second at F8. So let's have a go, let's see what happens. I frame up my shot, focus on James. The light hasn't changed, so hopefully I can just shoot the picture. Bingo, perfect, lovely exposure. That is a bit of a faff, isn't it? And it may not always be feasible to run up to your subject and put a gray card in front of them. I mean, if you're photographing something on the other side of the sea or something like that, that's not gonna work, or a landscape, for example. So this is where you're learning about what mid gray looks like comes into play. So where on James is mid gray? Well. He's, quite, he's got fair hair and he's got quite fair skin, so I wouldn't want to meter directly off his face because that's going to be lighter than mid-grey. You can kind of see that straight away, can't you, just by looking at the card. 
t-shirt's a bit white. We've got a bit of grey going on here, haven't we, James? We've got a bit of grey going on here, mate. <laughs> so, yes, mother. Right, so we've got a bit of grey going on here, but it's a bit lighter than the mid-grey of the card. I would suggest the most likely piece of mid-grey is going to be here, James's jeans. Not the dark area, because these have got fades in. I go for a lighter area just there. Let's give it a go and see what happens. Let's try shooting this. So, focus on James. Let's put the dot on his jeans, get a bit closer. Set the exposure. It's only perfect, isn't it? I don't actually need to do it because there is nothing to change. It is the same as the mid-grey. Smuggit.com, that's where I come from. But the thing is, as you learn about recognising mid-grey, this is stuff that you can do. The other metering modes. Let's have a look at the centre weighted. This is where the camera is working very similar to spot in that it's measuring around the middle of the picture, but it's kind of taking an average as it moves out towards the edges. This isn't a single dot. The idea behind this is that it can kind of average out bright highlights and darker tones and it will give you a more accurate reading. Let's have a go. We already know the camera has the correct exposure set on it. I'm shooting manually. So, unless anything has radically changed with the light, which I don't think it has, that should be the correct exposure. Now, according to center weighted metering, I am massively, massively overexposed. The light is changing, I'll grant you that. So let me set what it says. It now says it needs a 500th of a second at f8. Take the picture. Well, you can make your own mind up about that as to whether it's accurate. What's happening is the brightness behind James and the brightness of this white beach hut are confusing the light meter. It's averaging out all that brightness to become mid-grey. But this isn't what we want the exposure for. We want the exposure for James. And he's down in there, and in this shot, he's become a bit of a silhouette, hasn't he? Let's have a go with the evaluative metering system. What that does is take the whole scene. In fact, let's just show you what it's doing. It's looking at kind of this slab of white here, and it's looking at where there's a bit of white running in here. It's looking at James. It's looking at the brightness of the sky behind James, and it's looking at probably about that much of the darker timber on this beach hut. And it's gonna average the whole lot out. It's gonna look at all those tones and say, okay, I'm gonna make the average of all of that equal mid-gray. See what it does. Make sure I'm on the right mode. Yes, I am. Reframe my shock. So I want it to be the same. This has to be fair. There it is. Okay, that's saying it's underexposed. It wants to be brightened up. So let's brighten her up a bit. There we go. Correct exposure. Now it says it's a 200th F8. And that could be correct. It's not bad. I wouldn't say it's, it's that good. I'd say it could do with being a little bit brighter, personally but it is pretty close. The great thing with all of these metering modes, particularly the evaluative, is that you can always take a shot and then change it afterwards, particularly when you're learning. It's one thing to be able to recognize mid-gray quickly when you have experience. It's another when you're first setting out and you're trying to learn this stuff. Personally, I never ever use center weighted because I just find I've never had a good result with it at all. So I just say, bin it. Most of the time, I shoot on fully matrix metered, where it's averaging the entire scene, because I find, for the most part, it gets that right. Now, don't be hung up if your exposures are a little bit bright in one and a little bit dark in the other. <clears throat> I'm not talking about massive differences of burnt out to a completely black. If there are subtle little differences, don't worry. This has always happened. When you shot film, it happened too, but you probably didn't recognize it because when you took the film to the lab, they printed your pictures and they corrected those little subtle differences in exposure for you. So you didn't even know it happened. Now you put your pictures into the computer and you can see that there are little subtle changes. Don't get too hung up. <clears throat> you can always make iron them out yourself if you want to. So 99% of the time I'm shooting on fully matrix. I take a lot of test exposures because this is digital. It's brilliant. I can just take a quick shot like that and have a look. It doesn't even have to be in focus and think that's too dark. I need to extend the shutter speed a bit to brighten it up or vice versa. If I was shooting in a priority mode, aperture priority or shutter priority, 
I can use the exposure compensation button to do the same thing. If you don't know what an exposure compensation button is, you're going to have to go and look at the exposure compensation film in the exposure section. So there you have it really. Oh, and spot metering, very, very useful. Landscapes. If you've got a kind of contrasty, tricky scene, it's really great because you can put a spot on an area that you have visualized as being mid gray and then manually, manually set that exposure onto your camera and you'll know that your exposure is going to be pretty good. If you're shooting in RAW, it really doesn't matter if you're kind of half a stop either way. In fact, you can probably go more, but it's good practice to try and get it right because if you're like me, you don't like fiddling in the computer. So spot metering is very accurate, but it's really a thing from the days of film when you did have to get the exposure much, much closer because there wasn't a second chance. You couldn't look at it in the back of the LCD. If you were shooting slide film, that was the actual bit of celluloid that was in the back of your camera. So you really did have to get it right. But the great thing with digital is you do have a second chance.